If you've turned on the TV recently, you've surely seen all of the headlines about MLB's foreign substance issue. We've all seen clips of pitchers getting thrown out of games for using the sticky stuff, but what makes this issue such a big deal right now? Well in today's video, we are going to be breaking down this issue by covering what it is, why it's so important, and what steps are being put into place by the MLB to stop it. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. First and foremost, in order to go over how sticky stuff benefits a pitcher, we need to first understand the metric that it impacts the most. Spin rate. Spin rate is the measure of how fast each pitch is spinning. It's measured in revolutions per minute, or RPMs. I've talked a ton about this metric in particular on the channel before, so we're going to keep this recap pretty brief. This is a horizontal and vertical break chart that describes the movement that a pitcher puts on the ball. For an average spin rate fastball, we will say that that pitch shows up about right here on our chart. If we throw that exact same pitch, but the only metric that changes is a higher spin rate, then our pitch would now show up here on the chart, meaning that the pitch would drop less than our average pitch before. And just the opposite would happen if we threw that same pitch with a lower spin rate. To give you a general idea about what these marks are, the average spin rate in the MLB this season is around 2300. And that number of course is relative to the velocity that that pitch is being thrown at, but this will at least give you a general idea. High spin rate would be considered anything over 2400, and low spin rate would be anything below 2100. But what does this really look like if you're just watching a game? Well, if an average spin rate pitch was thrown right down the middle, the batter will typically be more successful at putting the bat to the ball. But if we throw that same pitch with an above average spin rate, it would pass through the zone at a higher point. To the batter, who is used to swinging at average spin rate pitches, he has a higher likelihood to swing right under and through this pitch resulting in a swing and miss. And the thing that is so tricky about spin rate is nobody currently knows how to increase it legally through training. We know it typically increases with velocity, but that's about it. So you should start to see why this metric is important. Now let's move on to how foreign substances come into play here. To start off with a pretty obvious statement, foreign substances affect a pitcher's spin rate. But why does that matter? Well, if we take a look at this chart from Jeff Zimmerman featured in Driveline's spin rate article that they did a while back, this shows us the relationship that spin rate has with swing and misses. On our axes of this chart, we have spin rate and velocity. The percentages show the swing and miss rate for the combination of spin and speed. The average MLB fastball is thrown at about 93 miles per hour, with an average spin rate of 2300. But if we increase our spin by only 300 revolutions per minute, we can see a significant increase in our swing and miss rate. This increase results in 3% more swing and misses. And while 300 RPMs may seem like a lot, Eric Sims recently did a video going over how using several different popular sticky solutions affected his spin rate, using things like pine tar, pelican grip, and spider tack. Every single substance he used increased his spin rate by at least 100. And while using pine tar and spider tack, he saw his spin rate increase by over 300. That's a pretty big deal. So why do we care so much about this now? Well, this year we have seen one of the lowest batting averages in MLB history, sitting at 237 at the time of making this video. And the strikeout percentage in comparison to that is almost 3% higher at 27%. This isn't all attributed to the sticky stuff, but the pitcher's stuff is nastier than ever, and the use of foreign substances aid in making hitting even harder than it already was. And if you pair that information with a retired pitcher noting that 80 to 90% of MLB pitchers use some variation of stick'em, now you see why there's a problem. But if this is such a widespread issue, why isn't there a rule to stop pitchers from using it? Well, there is. It's just not enforced very well. Let me explain. If we have two pitchers in a game, one from each team squaring off against one another, and pitcher A is using a foreign substance to better his stuff, the opposing manager typically has to tell the umpire to head out to the mound and check the pitcher's equipment or the ball in order for any action or a suspension to take place. But that same manager knows that his own pitcher is using that same substance, so in calling attention to the other team's pitcher, he's putting his own team's pitcher at risk for a counter-investigation. So nobody does anything, and the game just goes on. If you've been doing any research on this topic, you've probably seen examples of pitchers who have gotten a ton better in a short period of time, being put on blast for graphs like these, showcasing an abnormal increase in spin rate from year to year. But of course these guys turn to this stuff. Nothing has been done to stop them. In this league, you get paid to perform, so everybody's always looking to find a competitive edge. 
Back in 2014, Bauer tweeted out this to his followers to see if anybody knew of a way to increase spin rate legally, before being one of the most public anti stickum players in the league on Twitter. In the winter of 2020, Bauer even had an article published in the Players' Tribune stating his frustration in seeing the increased spin rates for some of the Astros' starters on top of the other allegations against the club that year. Of course, it's hard to pretend that someone using this substance now should be let off the hook since he was so against it in the past, but it's time for the MLB to step in and cut this off before it goes any further. All the players are looking for is a level playing field, similar to the grievances that the steroid era caused the game. If you aren't using this stuff, you're at a disadvantage as a pitcher, and if everyone is using this stuff, it makes it even harder on the hitters than it already is. The current rule is fine, but the way it is being enforced hasn't been working. As of last week, when a lot of this stuff was brought to light, the MLB has reportedly reached out to clubs to inform them that umpires will now be much more aggressive at enforcing the rule by doing random and repeated checks of pitchers around 8-10 to 10 times per game. If you're caught, the current rumor is that the penalty will be a 10-day suspension without pay. Reports show that this could be initiated into the major league level as early as next week, so we have to wait and see how this affects our sport but at least the idea of keeping players accountable will be a step in the right direction for leveling the playing field. Now I'd love to hear what you guys think about this topic in the comment section down below. And I know that you have an opinion because on a lot of my past videos this has been one of the most popular comments. Is this process going to help the sport out in the long run, or is it just going to slow the game down a little bit more? Either way, would love to hear your opinions down in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in to today's video guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.